friends. I'm gonna paint a 20 by 20 canvas. I've already started a little bit, but I'll tell you what I've done. And I'm gonna paint a Highland cow on top of this background I've got going. It's gonna be so cute. And I have a traceable printed out. I have a traceable available for this video. And I printed it out and started taping it together. And then I'd show you a little bit what that looks like. Okay, so first, this is a 20 by 20 canvas. It's an inch and a half deep. Um, I love it's gallery wrapped and tucked, so it's a really nice heavy canvas. I've sprayed it with water to tighten it up like a drum and dried it with a hair dryer. Um, after I get the traceable on here, I'm gonna write the word love, like I always do, because I think it's a really cool way to start a painting. Um, I use this brush, it's an inch filbert. I would recommend using a longer handle when you sit at an easel and paint like this, uh, but I really like this brush, so I used a short handle one. And then I just painted wet areas, so I, might, I started up here where it's wet, and I just worked my way over this way, worked my way down. Um, as you can see here, I've got a couple of charcoal lines, this one for my horizon line. And I just painted this wet too. And then I'm, I'm gonna try to stick with Prussian blue. Here, so you can see how it's spelled. Hopefully that's focusing. Prussian blue. And then the cow's really close to a raw sienna. So I'm using a raw sienna out of the tube. And then I'll show you my palette. So I don't think I've ever showed this on camera. But so I put my, I use um, styrofoam plates because I can fit them into a gallon baggie. And then I put another, it's kind of slipped, but I put another plate on top to help protect the paint. So the bag, baggie doesn't stick to the paint. And then before I put it in the baggie, I mist it with a little bit of water. So there's my Prussian blue and there's my raw sienna. And then I mix different shades of blues and browns in the middle of my palette to get all these muted colors. And I even get kind of a sagey green. I don't know if it looks green on the video, plus I've covered it up a little bit. But I actually, oh here, there you can kind of see it. It's kind of a gray green. So I'm getting some really pretty colors and I'm using titanium white. I'm gonna try not to use any Mars black in this one and just use these two colors. Because if you look at that color, that looks quite black. So we can, we can get some really darks. And I think that's all I wanna show you because I'm gonna flip my camera around and we'll take a look at the traceable on the floor of my studio. Hey, welcome to the floor of my studio. That makes me laugh. So the polka dot uh, background over the carpet is just a tablecloth that goes underneath my light table to help protect, here's my light table, help protect um, if I drop a brush when I'm painting. Oh, and then I've got a hair dryer over there. You can see my paints. Um, that's a light. I don't know if I want to show the light. I'll probably blind you. Okay, so let's go back to the traceable. So I've taped, I printed it out on my printer from my website, or printed it out on my printer uh, from the PDF on my website, and then I just leave it in the order it prints. And then I take that first printout, and I cut it out, and I tape it together. Let's see if I can show you. So this is taped together, and I tape on this side, the, the side that prints out, not the back. And then here you can see a couple sheets that I haven't cut out. So this is the top right, and it'll overlap. You know, there's even little crop marks you can have it print on the PDF. It'll overlap each other, and you can tape it. And then once I get it taped, cut out and taped together so it's all like this bottom two thirds, then I'll scribble on the back probably with a dark color. That's chalk pastel and tape it to my canvas. But I just thought, wanted to show you, on my website it shows, um, there's a link to how to print out larger traceables in a PDF so that it tile, this is called tiling, so that it tiles like this and you can put together like a simple puzzle. Okay, I hope that helps a little bit. I'm gonna get finished this scribble on the back and then transfer it to my canvas. 
Okay, I've got my traceable tape to my um, painted 20 by 20 canvas. And I'm hoping, I'm pretty sure I've painted far enough in, probably more than I needed to. Um, you could paint the whole background if you wanted. Um, or you could tr do the traceable first and then paint the background. There's not a right way or a wrong way to do this. I'm just gonna, my tape kind of popped off. So it won't be um, perfectly flat. So what I usually do is I take a ballpoint pen and I like red because it helps me see where I've been. And then I'll just start, kind of smooth it out, hold it with my left hand and I scribble back and forth a little bit. You don't have to press too hard. So that's the top part of the horn. Let's see if it's there. Oh, yep, can you see it? So I'm gonna get this whole thing traced on and I'll be back. Alrighty, I've got it traced onto my canvas and I wanna take a look to see how it transferred. Oh, and before I forget, so there's a line right here and a line right here. Um, this one's probably the more important line. If you wanted to get that on your canvas or trace this whole thing on a blank canvas first, that's totally fine because that's this horizon line right there. Oh, and I'm gonna need to maybe darken some things up, but it looks like for the most part, it came off really well. Uh, this, I happen to use black charcoal for this. Um, you could use graphite. I just like charcoal or chalk for acrylic painting because it dissolves into the paint really well. Um, you can use some, there's some artists on YouTube that use graphite pencil. Um, there's also, I think it's called Sarral, S, it's S-A-R-A-L, it might be S-E-R-A-L, transfer paper that you could use. It's like, um, if you're old enough to remember carbon, carbon paper, it's a lot like that. Um, I'm looking for a little, oh, here's the charcoal I use. It's just a, a skinny charcoal. It's square. I don't know if you can see that. It's just a little stick, but I'm going to, why I can still kind of see them. I'm going to put in some of these lines that I can't see, but then, it, then I'll end up lightening them up, um, with a kneaded eraser. You've seen me probably do that in every video. But it turned out really well. Oh, and I also want to remember to write the word love. So maybe, maybe up here. It's a perfect way to start a painting. That This is a watercolor pencil that I have. Um, it'll dissolve right into the paint too. And I think from here on out, I may do a time lapse. I'm going to do, um, on this traceable, I kind of marked out for you some of the darker areas, like around the mouth. I may um, put reminders in there for me as well that there's some darker areas. And then I'm thinking I will do a time lapse, pop back in maybe with a comment, do a time lapse. I'm not totally sure because we don't want this video to get too long. Oh, see, I just kind of messed up there. I want to make sure I see that. So when I talk, I don't always pay attention completely to what I'm doing. <laughs> I can't talk in art. But yeah, I think I'm gonna um, paint in the dark areas.
pop in, slow the video down here, and uh, just insert a few comments about what I'm thinking, what I'm doing. So a lot of times a good way to do an acrylic painting is um, background to foreground and then darks to lights. Um, I don't always do that, but in this one it's really handy to find all the dark areas. So I kind of keep my road map of my traceable where I'm going on the canvas. And then I wanted to say, if you want, like right there, it looks black. It's just two coats. So like the straight up Prussian blue, and then this sort of greenish color I made, which is a little raw sienna and Prussian blue, and it makes kind of this dark green. Here, I'll see if I can, uh, see if you can see it. It actually looks almost black. Isn't that cool? Because as I mentioned earlier, I'm doing a three color painting here. Um, raw sienna, pr Prussian blue, and white. And I'm just mixing different values. Um, the raw sienna and a little bit of white makes a really nice creamy color. And then I'm also using a, um, oh, it's a number 12 filbert brush. Um, you could use whatever you want. A bigger brush would make it go quicker, but I'm, I'm just playing, having fun. Uh, is there anything else I want to tell you guys? I think that's about it. Oh, I was going to mention too, so this is a lot of fur to paint on a 20 by 20. Maybe you want to do this traceable as an 8 by 8 and then you won't have so many brush strokes. You can block in the areas and probably a lot quicker and easier to do. Um, but I wanted to do a big painting. Okay, um, it's getting late. I think that's the only things I wanted to pop in and say. We'll go back to the time lapse here. guys I just wanted to pop in because I thought of a couple things and then I thought I'd just show you my palette um, the paint is getting a little sticky because I put this painting on hold for about 10 days to do another video and I didn't have that big of puddles of color going so one reason why artists sometimes put out quite a bit of color is because with acrylics it'll stay wet longer um, just a little tip there you can put out a little bit at a time if that's how you like to paint um, but what I was thinking is I'm painting here. So the nose is definitely going to be my focal point of the painting. It has the darkest darks and the most dark around it. And it's also going to have some of the lightest lights. Um, but what I was thinking is here, I think I'll pick it up. Maybe you can see it. So can you see, so like right in here, there's like little white specks. Ah, there you can kind of see them little bits of the canvas showing through. Um, so that's one reason why, like I say you don't have to put, you know, you, I said you could paint the whole background if you wanted to. So if I would have painted the whole background, I would be getting less white, white bits coming through little places where the paint dries and it's kind of like it, popping isn't the right word. You just get, get little white specks. That's about as, the best I can describe it. Um, and that's why a lot of artists, they paint a ground, they call it a ground. So they'll just paint, um, sometimes they use the same color every time. They might take a little black, a little white, a little burnt umber and paint the whole painting. So that way you've got kind of a middle value color underneath the whole painting and you don't get the little white, little white bits. Okay. I hope that made sense. Um, it looks a little bit like a hot mess, but when I look at it in the video, it's further away and it looks better. Uh, what I'm doing, if I hadn't mentioned it already, is I'm just painting the dark areas. Um, oh, I did mention painting dark to light. Um, you can paint light to dark. Acrylics are super forgiving. You can do any way you want. But I decided to paint the darks because I'm gonna paint hair over them, and then it keeps my roadmap of where I'm going. Okay, back to the time lapse.
that wasn't much of a time lapse section because I thought of something else. So I pretty much have the nose, I would say blocked in, even though I have a little bit of shading in there too. Um, blocking in is usually just laying down a base color. Um, but I wanted to show you, I'm a little tired of working on the darks, plus I've got most of them in. So I put more titanium white on my palette and I mixed it with just a little bit of raw sienna to get this pretty creamy color. I already had that on my palette. I just made a big puddle of it and then made another puddle of it, but darker. And then this is a muted puddle. So it's, it's um, some raw sienna with a little bit of this greenish color. And I'm going to start working on some of the lighter areas um, just because I'm not real happy with the painting right now as it looks. And it's a little bit like putting together a puzzle. Sometimes you, you know, work on the orange section or you look, work on the buildings, you know, and it's also sort of like building a building, you know, I'm just keeping the structure, the roadmap, the foundation, to see where I'm going. So I don't want to like, um, super zoom in on the nose, get all the highlights and get it just so when I really want it a little bit differently after I see how the colors next to it look. Hope that makes a little sense. But I also wanted to show you my palette. Okay guys, thanks. I wanted to pop in again because I think from here on out it'll be mostly time-lapse because it's just a lot of repeat of the same thing. So I'm using this, I'm back to this Filbert brush and I think the ear is pretty much done. So I put in the light colors and then if I lost some dark areas and I wanted them back in like right around here because this will be light. I haven't painted it yet but it'll be light right here. Um, I just went up and down and light and dark until I liked it. And I think I'm really going to like it. It made me a little nervous to have all this blue and green on here. Um, but the raw sienna is a transparent color. So you can even paint over the dark area. Here, I'll do a little bit. And it won't really, it doesn't cover. You can, I don't know if you can see that. It doesn't cover, but it shows. I mean, well, I say it doesn't completely cover. It's transparent. That's the word I'm looking for. So I'll pick up the painting and show you. But the rest is pretty much doing it just like the ear. Let's see if I can get the ear in here. <laughs> Sorry, guys. There's the ear. Get a little closer. So the rest of this Highland cow is just the same as the ear. Painting darks, painting lights, seeing how you like it. Oh, and then I don't know if you could see in this dark area, I painted some raw sienna over it and it really just barely shows, which is nice subtle look. So the transparency really is helpful. Oh, and I gotta, I, I keep, every time I pop in, I've been meaning to say, look at my cute moon earrings. So Favorite Daughter has an Etsy and I've got to remember to put the link um, in the video description. But aren't those fun? She makes smaller earrings for me because I don't wear really big earrings. And she has some really cool ones with leather strips. Um, you'll definitely have to check that out. Thanks, favorite daughter, for the moon earrings. I love them. Okay, guys, I'll be back probably at the end of the video.
Hey friends, I think I'm done. Um, still have the same palette I started with. I did add more raw sienna, more zinc white, um, and then mixed some more color, but I, I just, I use these colors and then values of these colors. So it's a two color painting, Prussian blue and um, raw sienna, making sure it's raw sienna. Yep, raw sienna. Or it's a three color painting if you count white. Some people don't count white and black, some do. Um, so I guess the only thing I really wanna say is, um, oh gosh, I forgot, I forgot the saying. saying. Oh, values, so lights and darks um, do all the work and the color steals the show. Because you can, I used blue and a rusty orange in this whole painting and you could use you could have used other colors but it's really the values that make it come forward or move backwards into the canvas um here let's give you a closer look <clears throat> excuse me there's the nose so what i'll do is um let it sit in my studio for a while and uh, see if i like the lights the darks so if I can show you an ear here. So you can just see little spots of white on the tip of the fur. <clears throat> Sorry guys, I was fine until I started videoing. Just to sort of catch the sunlight. Okay, as I mentioned, I'm pretty sure, oh yeah, in the beginning I showed you the traceable. Um, let me know what you think of this painting. It's a good value study painting. Uh, so is the, I've got a big snowman. It's, uh, I use black with that one and mostly white. And then there's a little bit of color in there for fun, but it's a good value study painting. Uh, another one that I did is the winter pine tree. That one's also a really great value study painting. So you can practice with values and I think it can help. Not only do you look more like a sophisticated artist when you just use two colors, um, it can help eliminate all the decisions and just work more on the values anyway. Okay, I think I stressed that enough. Thank you, thank you so much for your comments, your likes, your shares. It means so much to me. It's, um, it's fun to connect with you. It gives me hope that I can uh, succeed as an artist. Great big art hugs. I hope to chat with you. I hope to chat with you guys soon. Bye.